Hi, thanks for tuning in to Light and Darkness. Uh, today we will be going into episode two, which is His Promise, the Promise of God. And um, I'd like to, um, our previous episode was Our Condition as Humanity. Today we'll be following up on the promise of God, which is really the response, the response of God to the condition and the plea, whether it's silent or verbal, the plea of humanity to, uh, for, the, uh, for a long-term solution and a right solution for the current condition that we're in. And so um, I'll read to you Isaiah 42, 16, and then we'll just um, get into the scripture um, uh, sentence by sentence. So his promise. It says, I, uh, I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. Let me read that one more time. It says, I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things that I will do. I will not forsake them. And I'd like to start with um, asking or commenting on the verse where it says, I will turn the darkness into light before them. See, there's a difference between you and I turning a light switch on and off in our homes or in this studio. We have a lot of lights going on here to, so that you can see me through the camera lens. But there's a difference between this type of light and the light that God is referring to in the spiritual realm. There's the physical light and then there's the spiritual light. And the spiritual light, there is no human that can ignite that light except the power of God, except God himself. He has, it's, it's divinely inspired. So as much as you and I may be proud of how much we can, or how, how great we can turn a, turn a switch on and off or even create the light bulb itself, the ultimate ruler, which is God, he is referring to and he is uh, focusing on this spiritual light. Um, and, and that's why he, he goes into why he's the light of the world, which we'll get into in another episode. But um, verse by verse it says, I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. And, the, and so when I read this, it, it infers to me, or the way that I took it, is that I will, I will lead the blind, meaning that there is the existence of blind people. Not all people see. I may see the camera, or you may see me, or we may meet one day, and we may see each other physically, but he's not referring to the physical sight. He's talking about the spiritual sight. And in this, he's saying, I will lead the spiritually blind. There may be people who are physically blind as well as spiritually blind, but he's really referring to and focusing on the spiritual blindness. And so he says, I will lead the blind by the ways that they have not known. So even these blind people, there are ways that have not been made known to them. And the next uh, verse justifies this by saying, along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them, which when I read this, it's a, um, I, I thought about, um, because it says, unfamiliar, along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. Um, what I took from it is that a blind person, I was just trying to imagine it, uh, a blind person will probably take the same steps probably every day, right? Why? Because it's safe, it's secure. He probably hears those in the city, you know, the familiar voices, maybe the traffic, maybe, you know, he, he's figured out a route where, you know, the roads are, where the traffic light is, and so things like that. And so that blind man or that blind woman continues on their path of familiar territory. And that's fine, and that's understandable, and that's probably a wise choice for that blind person in that situation, absolutely. But it says... The hope and the, the, the solution is that he says, I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. So he's providing hope for those blind people. And he's saying, I'm going to guide you. Even though you're blind, I'm still going to guide you to new paths, new territories, new streets, new traffic lights. I'm going to have you pass new people. I'm going to take you to new places that you as a blind person 
could not do on your own. Why? Because you can't see. So he's giving them that sense of hope. And then he says, I will turn the darkness into light before them, which uh, illustrates his power and his sovereignty. If someone is claiming that they can turn the darkness into light before them, what kind of power does this God have? What kind of power does this person have that in authority claims, I will turn the darkness into light before them? Why? That means that he has to be, that God has to be in a position and in a state of mind where he can see blindness, but he himself is not blind. Therefore, with confidence and authority, he's saying, I will turn the darkness into light. See, he still had a choice. He could leave those people in darkness and remain in the light himself. But the very fact that Jesus came down onto earth as man was for that reason, was to eliminate, eradicate the darkness, and to lead the way and to provide a light for blind people like you and I. And then he says, and make the rough places smooth. So here he's acknowledging that, yes, there will be rough places. Yes, there will be challenges. Yes, as a blind person, I'm not used to getting out of my box. I'm not used to getting out of my comfort zone. I'm not used to anything but the status quo. But he's telling me, and he's making the promise of hope to you and I, that he's saying, you will travel through rough places. That's inevitable. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm trying to be transparent to you, with you. But with those rough places, watch me make them smooth. With those dark places, watch me create light. With your blindness, watch me guide you. Watch me get you to point B. Watch me create a better destination than you had ever imagined. Why? Because you're blind, but the reality is that I'm God and I'm not blind. And that's his promise for us as long as we trust him and as long as we abide in him 100%. And then he goes on to say, he finalizes by saying, these are the things that I will do. I will not forsake them. So he's promising that he's not going to leave us. Even if we rebel against him, even if we go astray, even if we go our own way, and I believe in this context in Isaiah, this group of people had already disobeyed. This group of people were, because they were blind, because they were going their own way, they probably weren't in sync with the plan of God. Their hearts probably weren't merged with the heart of God. But he's saying, still, with that in mind, these are the things that I will do. All of these things that I just said, I'm going to do that. And guess what? I'm not only just going to do that, but I'm not going to forsake you. So I'm promising that I, your God, will be with you uh, through this process, through the mountains and the, the, the valleys, through the trials and tribulations. I will lead you as long as you abide in me, as long as you trust in me as your God, because I am God and you're not God. And so um, I found that to be very powerful. And then it led me to, um, uh, to three questions that I want to leave with you today. And um, the question number one, uh, it is, excuse me, it, it is, um, do I accept or do I know that I'm blind? If I don't know that I'm blind, then that's probably the biggest challenge or obstacle to, um, to or hurdle to jump over. Because I myself, I see, I think that I see, right? I see the clock. <laughs> I see, I'm going a little over the time. I see the, the chair. I see the pulpit. I see the camera. I think that I see, and I'm content with what I see. But the Bible says that what you see is t what is seen is temporary, what is unseen is eternal. And what he's talking about is this spiritual blindness. And so he's saying, you have to accept and you have to understand and you have to realize, you have to come to this awareness and this realization that summer or that whoever is watching this, you have to realize that you are blind relative to the sight that I'm talking about, relative to the sight that I'm referring to relative to the sight that I want to give you. I'm waiting to give it to you. But the first thing is you have to say, Lord, yes, I'm blind. Get on our knees. Surrender to God because he's God and I'm flesh and I'm weak. And so 
accepting or knowing that I'm blind is step one. And I think that once we uh, pass that hurdle and pass that first step, step two and step three become a little bit more moldable and a little bit uh, more feasible to achieve and to, to come to in our lives. And so step two is, am I ready to cross unfamiliar paths? So see, sometimes we blame it on our blindness. I say, oh, well, I'm blind, so this is going to be my excuse for the rest of my life. This is it. This is my situation. This is how God created me. This is how I was. This is how I am. This is how I'm always going to be. This is how my family was. I mean, this is reality. And, but once I accept or know that I'm blind, I still have another responsibility. And that responsibility is to understand or to answer the question, be able to answer the question, am I ready to cross unfamiliar paths? Because sometimes when we, sometimes when we don't see and when we're being led, it's a lot easier than seeing the magnitude of God and seeing the awesomeness of God and seeing what he has in store for us and all we, we're sort of like taken back and we don't know what to do with it all, that we sometimes we say, well, now that I see all this, am I really ready to cross the unfamiliar path? Am I really ready to cross the bridge? Am I really ready to allow God to take me from point A to point B? And so that is equally as challenging as the first question is accepting or realizing that I'm blind. Um, but um, it's an easier question to ask, I think, once we see, as opposed to theoretically, once uh, while we're still blind and just looking to see or finding out where to see or asking God to remove the shackles from our eyes to be able to answer question two. And question three, and I'll leave you with this, is do I believe he will turn darkness to light, rough places smooth, and ultimately keep his promise? So do I believe? It's all in the belief. It's all in the faith. It's not in these two eyes. It's in my spirit. And the spirit is connected with my heart. So again, I always go back to the condition of my heart. If the condition of my heart is moldable, if he really is the potter and I'm the clay, and if I'm allowing myself to be molded by him, then the question is, do I believe he will turn darkness into light? And that belief, the intensity or the temperature of that belief, my faith, is ignited relative to the condition of my heart. And so any way, the way that I answer it or the way that you answer it or that your family answers it is really, it goes, it goes back to the condition of our, of our heart and um, to be able to answer that. And really, if I say yes, I believe he will turn darkness into light. Yes, I, w I do believe that uh, he'll make the rough places smooth no matter what the challenges are that I go through. And yes, ultimately he will keep his promise because he's God and I'm not. I'm, li I'm limited, and he is, he cannot be limited. He cannot be contained. Sometimes I try to contain him, but I can't. No matter what I do, his light just keeps shining and shining and shining brighter and brighter. And so, if, but if I say, yes, I believe, then that b belief, that act of faith, that faith the size of a mustard seed, the Bible says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will and you can and you have the authority to say to this mountain, move from here to there. And in his name, it will be done. It shall be done. But the question is, do I believe? So the first question is, do I accept and am I, am I aware that I'm blind? Question two, am I ready to cross unfamiliar paths? And number three, do I believe? And I think that once we answer these three questions, or at least begin to think about these three questions in our own personal lives, and more importantly, in society today, in this generation that desperately needs good leadership today, in this generation that has backslid, in this generation that has priorities unaligned with the priorities of God, in these last days, if we can begin to ask and to reflect on these questions, then I think that that will relate back to and allow us to understand, just understand, not try to fathom, not try to comprehend all of God, just try to, just to understand a glimpse, a tiny dot of his promise for our life. I thank you for joining me uh, today. We talked about his promise. Our next episode, we will uh, be discussing our choice 
um, as humans, as children of God, and the choice that he gives us. We don't serve a God that uh, forces us, but we are God's creation, and God created his creation to be a free will, and so we look forward to sharing that topic with you. Thank you for joining us today on ABN. Here you've been watching Light and Darkness. Watching AB.